Previously on Imptab Avatar, Blades in the Dao Fei, two separate worlds converged into one place, those in the spirit world finally meeting with Ko the Face Stealer and proving their resolve, not one of them flinching in the presence of this terrible spirit, all of them hanging onto their faces, thank goodness, because that would have been a bummer <laughs> if any of them lost their faces. On the material plane, the masked spirits had been completing a ritual whereby they might be able to speak to Ko, and upon discovering that Wei Young was just on the other side of that portal, Coinworth decided to pop into that bowl, use his ghost key to open up a portal directly into the spirit world, and he hopped through, brought back Kichi, who had a touching departure with her husband, Kenai, and also brought back Wei Young, and before he was able to make it back to the other side, Tonin was like, hey, I've got an idea. Can you maybe like sever my connection with Ko on your way out? And Day was like, I'll give it a shot. So he pulled out a spirit hook, tried to uh, manhandle the tether between Ko and Tonin to sever it or redirect it to himself. Uh, didn't roll very well, unfortunately, and got stuck in the spirit world with Kenai and Ko. So currently we've got all of the masked spirits. It's, it's kind of a messed up situation. We'll just have to kind of touch base with all of our friends here, see how they're feeling here in the world of Blades and the Dao Fei. What's shaking, everybody? You're listening to ImpTab Avatar Blades and the Dao Fei, the Blades in the Dark actual play where we make up almost everything on the spot. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host and GM, and today I'm joined by... Thomas Ryan, finally as... Hu Wei Young, Christian Randall as Tonin Yoru, and Evan Peterson as Siwei Ling. So yeah, let's just touch base with all three of our real, actual Earthbenders. Ah, oh, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just completed a job, yeah? Technically? I mean, we had an engagement <laughs> roll. You had an engagement roll, so yeah. Let's, I mean, let's roll out the dough, Ned. Come on, where's the cash in there? <laughs> you, you know, at the beginning of the campaign, we were like, none of us are earthbenders. And I was like, well, I'll be an earthbender, but I, I don't know it. And now we're all earthbenders, but I'm still the one that doesn't know he's an earthbender. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing I found interesting about us is that we were all were earthbenders, but we all weren't earthbending for very different reasons, which I think is cool. It's not like, <laughs> oh, we're all just going to keep this a secret from each other. Like, you straight up just don't know that you can earthbend. I knew, but I couldn't let it fly because of familial stuff. Tonin couldn't anymore, but he used to. I just, it, it was cool. It was cool to see that we all did the same thing, but with very <laughs> different flavors. That is cool. I didn't think of that. That's group mind right there. But we are in a situation. <laughs> you are, which is why we're going to make sure that you guys get your rewards from this here little uh, claim that you've done, I think is what we'll probably call it. <laughs> do, do we own territory in the spirit world now? <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at our claims map here and see what we've got available. Well, I, we, we need to think about narratively how this makes sense, that we're getting turf after we did something in secret in our basement. The only thing I can think of potentially is terrorized citizens, because now we can start spreading rumors that we stole a face from Ko, and people are going to be like, oh, all right, so these guys are part devil or something. <laughs> I kind of think terrorized citizens is our most, I mean, just in conjunction with everything else we've done, like... We attacked a church mid-sermon. Yeah. The church attacked us mid-sermon. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I don't think people are going to see it that way. <laughs> I think that could terrify some people. You're not even safe at church. <laughs> I think terrorized citizens is the most justifiable. Thematically appropriate. Yeah. I'm down for that. I'm down for it because I've been saying we should do that one since like the third session. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now whenever you complete a successful battle or extortion, you get plus two coin. Think of how much more money we could have had if we'd done that around like I don't know the third session or something <laughs> I know we really dropped the ball there if only someone would have mentioned it seriously <laughs> all right so that is our claim so since this is a claim job I mean you're not going to get money for the fact that you just stole somebody out of the spirit world because nobody asked you to do it <laughs> but we still we do still get payoff in terms of rep you earn two rep per score by default for stealing a face back from Ko the face stealer Next, we take plus one rep per tier higher if the target of your score is higher tier than you. A uh, Ko is a pretty high tier target. 
Um, how many tiers higher? I mean, I didn't specifically give him one, but I'd say he's probably like tier six. I'd say an well, immortal, immortal, famous legend spirit. <laughs> it's got to be pretty, pretty up there. <laughs> the problem is we can only earn one more rep, so it doesn't matter how many. As long as he's above us, we fill out our rep track. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. We're we're not going to worry about giving stats to Co the Face Stealer. We're just gonna. Yeah, we'll, do, we'll just give you plus one extra because he's a pretty high tier sword of target. <laughs> it's the old adage, if you give it stats, we can kill it, so. Exactly. <laughs> so, once again, you guys are maxed out on your rep. You could potentially level up if you want to spend some coin on that. How much is it to level up again? It's going to be 16 coin. Unless you get a patron, then it's going to be eight coin. Well, we don't have a patron. Not yet. We have 11 in our group coin right now. Yeah, so we only need five more and we could level up. Who wants to bite the bullet, though? (laughs) Well, I don't have five coin to donate to this. One thing that is just coming to my mind, uh, didn't Coinworth give Seaway five coin for helping out with this job? Yeah, they did pay him to hook us up. Yeah, but it got stashed, so... Mm. (laughs) I would need to take out ten. I don't really... I'm just not sure I have the cash right now Mm -hmm, for this. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are we straight up too broke to do this? (laughs) You might be. You might need to take some more jobs to get some cash to to tear up a little bit. But uh, we're going to talk about heat real quick. Oh, no. So here's the thing, though. This was pretty smooth and quiet, pretty low exposure. I mean, you guys were in your own base when you did this. In a secret room in our own base on top of that. Yeah. So that is zero heat for a baseline. We add plus one heat for a high profile or well-connected target, which Ko is. Add plus one heat if it happened on hostile turf. Nope. Plus one heat if you're at war. Nope. Plus two heat if killing was involved. Nope. So just one heat coming from the fact that people are hearing about the fact that the masked spirits are literally pulling heists in the spirit world. (laughs) It really helps solidify our reputation. I I mean, it's in our name. Yeah. We're the masked spirits and now everyone's going to think even more. That's why they're terrified. They're like, "We we already thought these guys were spirits. Now we hear they're actually going into the spirit world. We got bored of you chumps with like physical bodies. We <laughs> wanted to go after something a little more thrilling, you know? <laughs> All right, now we get to entanglements. We are currently at six heat. We're at wanted level two, so I'm going to roll two dice for us. I'm predicting that Jenna gets questioned by the police again. <laughs> oh, we're, now that we're at heat six plus, we're on a different table. Oh, Ooh. So I rolled a four, meaning that we have demonic notice or show of force. I think demonic notice makes sense. Demonic notice makes a lot of sense. Our past two heights were screwing with Glowworm and screwing with Ko. (laughs) Yeah, so demonic notice. A demon approaches the crew with a dark offer. Oh. Except hide until it loses interest, i.e. forfeit three rep, or deal with it another way. And then show of force is a faction with whom you have a negative status makes a play against your holdings. Give them one claim or go to war. Drop to minus three status. If you have no claims, lose one hold instead. Oh my gosh. These are both not good. I want to talk to the devil. I think that thematically that's what we have to do. So uh, some strong spirit could be Ko, could be Glowworm, could be so a third uh, one. You're telling me I'm Seaway is going to be working the desk and a demon's just going to walk in the door? That's not even the weirdest thing that's happened today, man. <laughs> well, I think what's going to happen is you guys are kind of like trying to calm down after this weird experience. Eelhound comes back and he's like, hey, uh, got, uh, there's, there's somebody at the front door the moment uh, uh like like a customer uh like mm, mm, may, no not a customer this, this is a different sort of situation why are you being so weird you hound because his, his eyes freak me out i'll go deal with him i think we should all go i don't like when one of us goes off alone yeah Bad things happen me too yeah we'll we'll all go up front in a show of solidarity is kitchy just in our basement still yeah <laughs> she probably needs to decompress too all right, you just wait here, Kitchy. There's something weird upstairs. There's tea in that cupboard over there, and I'll show her where I keep my tea. You're all just freaking out. It's just some unruly local, probably. Maybe. That doesn't really feel like our luck. I'm sure nothing <laughs> bad will happen. Yeah, you step out to the front, and you can see that there are some people gathered around one of the cages with one of the newer uh, types of animals that Sia was brought in. There's a couple people wearing priestly robes or so, big, oh, no. tall guys, both of them flanking a young lad uh, who turns to look at you all and says, Ah, uh, hello, friends. It is good to see you again. This llama bug is delightful. I've not seen one before. We 
excel in all types of exotic animals. Yes. This is this is Father Glowworm, right? I'm not just losing it. Oh, uh, no, this is Brother Hotaru. That's who it is. <laughs> oh, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, well, I would perhaps be interested in acquiring this llama bug from you, a, a wonderful creature you have raised. However, I do have an additional uh, request that I would like to make of you. It seems that the spiritual energies beneath your lair here are strange. I typically am the only one around these parts who can create portals from this world to the next, but somehow that has happened here as well. I must request that this ceases immediately. Okay, I I think that I need to talk as Thomas for a minute with to the boys. Do you guys want to fight Brother Glowworm? Are you crazy? We're all here, mostly. Most of us are all here. I'm good. <laughs> you just want to die at home is what you're saying. Look, last time I didn't get a chance to fight him, all right? Uh, this, is, this is the demonic notice. A demon approaches the crew with a dark offer. You can accept the offer. You can hide until the demon loses interest, i.e. forfeit three rep, or you can deal with it another way. So accepting it would be we agree to not open the spirit world again? Correct. That's that's a non-starter because of well, day. He, hear, hear me out. Seems fine to me. Has, <laughs> has Brother Hotaru seen me? I mean, have you made any effort to try and hide yourself from him? No, unfortunately. I'd like to <laughs> flashback. I made an effort to hide. Flashback. Uh, when I cuz <laughs> all right. I can make, I can a, feel, make a prowess resistance roll for me then. I can feel the ground, right? So I would know that it was him before we got upstairs. Yeah, go ahead and make a prowess resistance roll. Sure. Man, I haven't played as way young in a while. Uh, I'm just prowess. picturing all three of us coming out from the back and then you just ducking behind the counter really fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, he doesn't know I'm back, so I have the element of surprise here. I think you get an extra two dice for this. Oh, yeah. Because of Forged in Fire and also Anointed. Oh, so I get two extra dice? That's great, because I rolled a one and a two. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's see what the other two are. <laughs> Five. So what's th what this is going to mean is you can hide yourself if you take one stress. <sighs> That's a no-brainer. All right. But I am listening in. Do we want to lay low for a while? Because I could, I could lie to him and get him off our scent. I, I'd like to talk to him just a little more. Oh no. Um, brother Hotaru, there was a problem when we uh, dabbled in things that we probably shouldn't be dabbling in, and one of our friends was uh, stuck into the spirit world. If you don't want us opening doors, could you just open a door and bring him back, and then we won't have any reason to open it again? My my sweet summer child, you are asking a bird not to sing. You are asking a fish not to swim. I am the gatekeeper, the one who burrows between the worlds. I am the bridge between worlds. You are not a bird. You are not a fish. You are a man. And men should not be dabbling in such dealings. <sighs> Here's the thing. We can't afford to level up it right now anyway. I say we, we drop the three rep and, and uh, just get get and out. And tell him no. <laughs> are, we in a, are we in a consensus to drop the three rep? And As long as we explicitly tell him no. Um, I'm a contrarian for people I like. Okay. Then I'll say, call me Prometheus then. Get out of our shop. He gives kind of a sad little smile and pats you on the shoulder a couple times and you can feel, just like COA did, that strange chilling sensation over your skin. And he says, very well then, I do really want this llama bug though. It is delightful beyond measure. I will offer you six coin for this. Did you say <laughs> six coin? coin? I will offer you six coin for this llama bug. That's what the dice said. <gasps> Yeah. Is Brother Hotaru an idiot? Here's Lava the bugs don't even go for one coin these days. <laughs> Here's the thing. With that, we could level up. No, it's oh. fine. Uh, As a show of good faith between myself and yourself, perhaps this can ease the tensions that have arisen between us? Um, Certainly, let me just... And I, like, step behind the counter, and I, I shuffle for some things, and, and I pull out, like, a little travel cage and a little scroll, and I go, um, this scroll has... Um, care instructions for how to ensure your llama bug has the best life and I go and I, I cage one up for him and 
and he's kind of looking through the scroll like, uh, does he have a preferred brand of feed which you offer to him? Oh, um, sure. And I run back and yeah, I get a little, a uh, little bag of like, what do llamas eat? Hay? <laughs> what do bugs eat? Feces. Uh, he goes, <laughs> yes, I, I do not wish to upset my little friend's tummy by feeding him the wrong food that he's not accustomed to. Thank you very much for your help, sir. Um, certainly. Thank you. And thank you for visiting. Maybe, uh, have a good day and I'll see you hopefully not too soon because you'll live a very long life with your llama buck. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. And he turns to the two priests who have been standing behind him and they have just been glaring daggers at all of you the entire time and says, come, let's bring our new friend back to Lung Kao with us. And they all depart the shop. And uh, there's your demonic notice. Oh, no. I didn't mean to say Prometheus. I meant to say Icarus. Okay. Dang it. Can you cut it in, in like yeah. post and it just says Icarus, like really <laughs> out of place? Uh, <laughs> we only have five coin spots left in our vault. So we'll see where he's going to pocket one. It is his shop. He deserves yeah, it. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right. You guys have 16 coin now. But we lost and three minus rep. three rep. <laughs> How do we keep juggling this? Next job, I think we'll nail it. Next job, we should absolutely be able to do it. I'm going to stash that coin to fill up my second row of stash. Wait, you got two rows of stash now? Yeah. yeah so his lifestyle can go up. Dude, mm -hmm. are you just like the Monopoly man now? <laughs> it's a monocle. I get a monocle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, okay, so now that we've finished entanglements, we're in downtime. I'll say because you have filled your second row of stash, we can give you a free long-term project action to reduce the debt. Ooh, okay. Dang. And that is, what do I roll with for that again? Uh, whatever you feel like is most appropriate. You describe the actions you are taking and then roll the skill that best matches that. I'm upset because I think the most appropriate skill would always be consort for that, but I have nothing in it. <laughs> I mean, I guess in a way it's like swaying, but I'm not really convincing. I'm just paying. I'm not trying to like, you know, when I pay my student debts, I'm not like swaying the government to give me less debt. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're out doing jobs for mercy, then who knows what you're doing? Oh, that is true. I am working for mercy. <laughs> Okay, I'll go make my regular debt payment and uh, I'll make an argument while I'm there as to why these jobs should count as debt reduction for Sway. All right, go ahead and make that roll. Oh, that's only one die. Come on. I believe in you. Take a devil's bargain. So that's a one. Take uh, a devil's bargain. Uh, <laughs> what would the devil's bargain be, Ned? The devil's bargain would be... Mercy would be a little upset at first and would kind of rough you up a little bit. You would take level one harm. Oh, that's worth it. Oh, so like I offend her and she beats the crap out of me, but then agrees or then I get a die to see if she takes mercy on me afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> Oof. If, okay. If she takes mercy on you. Yeah. I mean, it's in the name. Yeah. She's already taken mercy on you. Ay. Ay. Okay. All right. I can take it. Four. All right, that is two ticks on the reduce the debt clock. Nice. So we're currently at four out of 12 ticked on reducing <laughs> the debt. Perfect. <laughs> Great. And this level one harm, we are going to call bruised ego. <laughs> Fair. Then for downtime actions, if I go visit Sawtooth, I can only reduce one of my har two harms, right? Now that I have two separate ones? Correct, for each separate healing roll. And remember, the way that we've altered the rules is whichever one you choose is automatically going to get reduced by one. So you could get rid of Bruised Ego entirely, or you could automatically reduce Spirit Burn down to one and potentially decrease it further based on your healing roll, or rather based on Sawtooth's roll. Yeah, I'm going to go see Sawtooth, and I'm going to work on my Spirit Burn. Um, Sawtooth, I know you're more of a uh, physical doctor, but I've got a unique ailment. <laughs> for you. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, you see, the thing is, I've been studying that ghost you put in the bottle and gave to me, and I've been learning more about the spiritual energies within people. Dang. That is... We we made a good idea giving him that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually going to give him an additional die to help heal spiritual maladies, meaning he's going to roll with three dice. Wow. Hey. That's like... That's like a flashback, except we actually did it in the right order. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the flow of time, my friend. <laughs> All right. He gets a five, which is going to mark two ticks on your healing progress clock. Perfect. That reduces spirit burn from two to one. And now you have one more free action. Okay. 
Oh, I'm going to work on uh, becoming an animal breeder. Yeah. Nice. You haven't worked on that in so long. We've been a little busy. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> indulging vices or visiting doctors or yeah. <laughs> reducing debt. You do end up with a lot of bumps and bruises. Also, it never goes very well to become a breeder because I roll two and take the lower because it's study. Unless you can figure out a different way to justify it. I can't. It's study. <laughs> All right, go for it. I mean, you got to be you got to learn how to manhandle animals a specific way. I think you could argue for skirmish. Hey, a 5 and a 4. All right. That is two ticks. You're currently at 4 out of 6 on becoming a breeder. Perfect. And then uh, I will go spend the rest of my downtime prepping our new muskox gerbil cages. Nice. You're getting weird with them now, man. They all, they all already exist. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think since you already got that really big purchase from Brother Hotaru, we're not going to roll for the shop this time around. Okay. Uh, we'll just include that as part of what he gave you. Yeah. I've been a little busy to run the storefront. It's probably been closed for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up then is Tonin or Wei Young. Either of you know what you want to do. I don't. Uh, I'm still thinking. Do you know what you want to do? I've got an idea. Um, I've got a few things I'd like to do. <laughs> uh, so first, first thing, I'm not sure if this even counts as a downtime activity. No one knows I'm alive. Um, or no one knows I'm back, at least. That's I'm, true. I'm, everyone assumes I'm still trapped in the spirit world, right? Yeah, even Brother Hotaru doesn't know you're back. Even yet. Brother Hotaru. Okay, so no one except you guys and Kitchi know that I'm here. And I want to keep it that way for a while, because that is going to be very helpful for us, I think. Yes. Well, you're going to have to keep Kitchi from going to Pie Show Night. <laughs> I'm at the Earth King's son. <laughs> <laughs> She's crazy. No one will believe her. Um... <laughs> First thing I'd like to do, I'm not sure if it's downtime, I want to get a new mask made Ooh. so that when I do go out, it I don't look like me. As to how it looks, um, I kind of want to get something creepy or like, you know what? Actually, no, I don't want to do something creepy. I want to, I want to get a mask that is, it looks like just a giant mouth, right? Like the whole face area is just a huge mouth. Okay. Like open mouth. Is this a dunk on Tonin? <laughs> like an open mouth. No, not a dunk on Tonin. <laughs> but no, I think that would look really cool. That's why. That's literally it. I don't want eye holes in it either because I don't need eye holes. I just, I want like a giant mouth face mask for when I go out and about so that people don't recognize me. All right. So is that a downtime activity? Let's start there. <laughs> yeah. So we could flex this in a number of different ways. One thing that I'm going to pitch to you would be... I don't think you necessarily need to like acquire an asset to get this mask. Like you have resources to be able to get this mask made, but potentially as part of the new reputation you're building for yourself within the mask spirits, we could make that like a reduce heat roll as people are becoming more intimidated by you. That kind of reduces how much people want to work with you or oh. work against you rather. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm down for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what would you like to roll then to reduce heat? Uh, my biggest one is... Study, survey, or consort. So probably one of those. Um, Maybe it could be a matter of consort, just like you go out into the city showing off your existence and just being generally intimidating. Okay. Yeah. And people people don't know it's me. They just think I'm part of the crew. Yeah. Some new guy. The mask spirits, they got this weird new mouth, dude. Yeah. They're recruiting some freaks to join their squad. <laughs> yeah. I want to do that. All right. Go for it. Give me some good dice. It's been so long. A six. Ooh. That's pretty. I mean, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> that is going to reduce your heat by three. Oh, nice. So yeah, now that we're only at three heat, we're below the range where Jenna could get taken in for questioning again. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Until you guys get more heat after your next job. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Of course. Okay. Uh, I still got two more downtime activities. I am going to... I got to figure out a way to bring Day back. I know he's trapped in the spirit world. I don't know that they've made a deal with Tigway. I'm not even sure if I know who Tigway is. So I'm going to I'm going to spend some time some downtime researching ways to reopen the door. That is a good point. You've got the bowl still. You've refused Brother Hotaru's demands to stop doing it, but the person who had the spirit key is in the spirit world. Yeah. So we are going to need to find out a new way to open the ghost door now that we know where it is. So I think that would make sense being a long-term project clock. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna work on that. And I guess for my first roll on that clock, it'd probably be study just to get a baseline. What do I do next? Yeah, since none of us are whispers here in the crew, I'm thinking six or eight clock probably. Reasonable. 
Go for the bigger number. All right, let's go with an eight clock then. Okay, go ahead and make that roll. Double twos. Uh, mm. Can I get a devil's bargain? <laughs> devil's bargain. Can you even make devil's bargains anymore? How much of your soul is left? <laughs> I was in the spirit world. I've absorbed a lot of soul, okay? The devil's bargain I will offer you is, as you're out and about trying to study, trying to gather information, somebody would notice some mannerisms that you have and be like, wait, is that Hu Wei Young? I thought he was trapped in the spirit world. I would rather push myself. Whoa. I don't want people to know. I'm, I'm going to apply some stress. All right. And that was a six. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, it was. You just didn't take a devil's bargain. <laughs> I just chose not to. Somebody's experiencing character growth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That brings us up to three of eight ticks on opening the door. Nice. Okay. And, uh, you know, for my last downtime activity... Let's do it again. Oh, why wow. not? I, I am desperate to bring Day home. Just really want my butler. He's he's like a father to me, you know? He's, he's helped me since I was a wee lad. Right on. Go for it. Another six. Yeah, yeah. I got a two and a six. <laughs> You're making some good progress. We're at six out of eight. Holy cow. This is awesome. Uh, I kind of want to blow some rep and just finish it out. <laughs> <laughs> what, Would you guys be offended if I used one rep to try and finish out the, the clock? I say go for it. Try and figure it out. It's our rep, so I got to make sure it's cool with all of you. Yeah, you're fine. All right, I'm doing it. Let's see. I'm using one one of our reps. I'm going to open the door. Yeah. I think we're at a point where we're probably going to be getting a lot of rep for our upcoming jobs because you guys are not necessarily going to be taking small jobs at this point, I would <laughs> yeah. imagine. Uh, well, that was, you guys aren't going to believe this, another six. You, <laughs> all right. You just like go into a like a sabbatical and use your doctorate for something useful for once i set up <laughs> i set up camp in your uh your spirit room and i just start studying every nook and cranny of that bad boy yeah you reach out to jen the calligrapher up at bssu you just grab like as many books as you can and you come out like a week later the room is just full of red bull cans <laughs> <laughs> cool i can open the door now right yeah, I think essentially what we'll say flavor-wise your study has done is it's taught you how to craft your own spirit key. Oh, shoot. That's cool. All right. And I'll say even since you rolled a six on all of those rolls, I'll say... Uh, I'll make a roll for it. You also learned how to craft your own spirit mask. Oh, shoot. Ooh. That's awesome. It is not a fine spirit mask like Day's is, but it is at least a spirit mask. Would I be able to modify my mouth mask to be the spirit mask as well? Yeah, I think we could say so. Okay, I, I assume it's not that currently, but like a different long-term activity, I could convert it over. Well, I mean, we we gave you the spirit mask as part of the long-term project you just completed, and we gave you the original mask as part of the reduce heat action, so I think we could probably just let it be that now. Oh, sweet. All right, I've got a spirit mask. It looks like a giant mouth. Nice. With, with too many teeth. I want to clarify it has too many teeth in it. Too many teeth. Yeah. I'm getting some no-face vibes from Spirited Away. Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Okay, that's all of my downtime activities plus some. All right, that brings us then to tone in. I am stressed. <laughs> so <laughs> now that I have trauma, if I don't indulge my vice, I automatically get one stress every downtime. Actually, that's a good point. Now that we all have trauma, things are going to get a little bit more complicated. Yay. So the indulging vice rules, if you do not or cannot indulge your vice during downtime, you take stress equal to your trauma. Okay, so just one? Yeah. So far. Yeah, let's just take a stress. So that's the first thing I'll do. Yeah, you guys are pretty low on stress right now, I believe. I only had one stress. So now I've got two. And I'm, I, I don't want to overindulge my vice right now. That would be very bad. Mm -hmm. Boy, howdy, though. I just... Well, day's gone. I wanted to do more training, but I wanted to... Tra Ned. Yes. This will require a roll, I believe. But... After the last session, I did make some changes to my playbook. Indeed. Would you like to share those with our audience? Sure. So previously, I had Cloak and Dagger as one of my abilities. Basically, whenever I changed my face, I would get a bonus uh, for throwing people off uh, with the shockingness of it all. Uh, instead, I took Analyst. During downtime, you get two ticks to distribute among any long-term project clocks that involved investigation or learning a new formula or design plan. This comes from the leech, is it? I believe that comes from the leech, yes. Um, and then I also moved around a couple points. I think I took one from Skirmish and put it in a tune. 
uh, since I sort of lost some abilities and gained some spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. So I would like to, if possible, use my other ability, Compel. You can attune to the ghost field to force a nearby ghost to appear and obey your command you give it. You are not supernaturally terrified of the ghost you summoned, although your allies may be. I would like to, if possible, reach into the ghost field and try and do some training with Day. All right. Jeez, that man. is a good point because you do still have that connection with Day where Day essentially has like one spirit tether with you and one spirit tether with Ko and he's kind of the middleman between the two of you. You're going to get training from a force ghost of Day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically in Resolve so I can start getting my attune higher, but I would like to, uh, I think I have to roll for Compel though. Yeah, go ahead and do that as an attune roll. A five and a six. Dang. There you go. Charge your dice, kids. So, yeah, I guess you, like, head down to the singing bowl room and just start playing a little tune, and then you see the force ghost of day <laughs> up here, like, in the air above the largest singing bowl. Oh, how are you, young man? It's been some time, hasn't it? I'm still trapped here with Ko. It's kind of a nightmare. Incredible. Um, I need some training. If we're going to get you out of there, I want to make sure I'm ready to face this. Will you... Will you train me? Certainly, young man. Climb into the singing Day, bowl. What, 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 is, what does he want, Day? Oh, what, he... What's he asking for? <laughs> Goes there. <laughs> you know how this works. I can't tell you everything he wants. Fine. <laughs> He's just asking for training. That's all. He's trying to reestablish his connection with you. Oh, delightful. Um, how many ticks do I get in Resolve for training? Uh, I know that we have crew training in Prowess, but we don't have it in any of the others. So you're just going to get one tick to increase your XP. Can I roll a tune for day to see if somehow he gets a bonus tick in the training? Mm, sure, why not? Come on, I've gotten sixes on like every roll so far. <laughs> Double sixes. <gasps> Double sixes, Critical you say. success. Okay. I got so trained. Um. Wow, we're gonna give you, I'm gonna roll to see how many ticks that's going to give you. It's going to give you two ticks. Two in total or two extra? Two extra. Dang. Amazing. I'm just, I just want to point out that these are the same dice that got Wei Young trapped in the spirit world in the first place. <laughs> the story knows what it wants. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> um, and then for my second downtime, I would like to start a long-term project. What do we got? I would like to begin to lay the foundations of this plan that I, I, I mentioned last time. I'll go over it again probably to make sure we're all on the same page, but the plan of using this upcoming Daofei War to dethrone the current Earth King, replace him with Wei Young, and then use Tigwe's knowledge to get Day back out of the spirit world so that basically we kill a billion birds with a single stone. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make you a little bargain here. Okay. Uh oh. The magnitude of the clock I'm going to give you is going to directly correlate to. Okay, so I'm going to say this. Eventually, you guys are going to have to pull a heist against the Earth King. Yes. If you make this project a four clock, by the time you complete it, you will have one additional die to your engagement roll when you start that heist. But if you do a six clock, you'll get two dice, an eight clock will be three, and a 10 clock will be four. A 10 clock or a 12 clock? A uh, 12 clock. Ah, I was like, okay, if you can 10 clock is a deal. <laughs> I think 10 clocks are technically a thing, but I don't like them for some reason. Uh, so yeah, 12 clock. So how about... <sighs> Keep in mind, because you have analyst, you get two free ticks during every downtime. Yeah, that's what's so nice. Like if I do... Um... Can other people help me on this long-term project? Yeah, it will become a, essentially like the projects are here and if you make them public, then anybody who would like to can help out with that. So oh, anybody okay. could help reduce Seaway's debt if they want to. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> In that case, I'm going to optimistically make it a 12 clock. All right. We're going to call this planning the coup. Yeah. So you're going to get two free ticks on that. And would you like to use your other action to make a long-term project roll as well? I would like to. And I would specifically like to use consort. I am going to go out amongst the other Dao Fei gangs that are the new blood. Mm -hmm. And I want to start disseminating this plan saying basically 
this upcoming war, we're going to not just get rid of the old guard, we're going to get rid of the Dao Fei. We are going to legitimize all of our work so that we don't have to work in the underground anymore. And we're going to become a lot richer. Basically, we're going to become capitalists. We're going to become <laughs> captains of industry. And we're going to legitimize all of our illegal dealings. And all we need to do is get rid of the old guard who are so hell-bent on keeping this oath that they made to never go legit. So that's my consort. Let's see how well that does. All right. Can I push myself? Sure. That's one stress or two? Two stress. Oh, okay. Two fine, stress. Whatever. I'll take it. One was a five, but I got to get that six. I got to start pushing this stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's another five. I'll just take the five. All right. With your two from Analyst, that is four out of 12 ticked on planning the coup. We can coup, guys. We can coup. Jeez. That is my my downtime. I'm not going to spend anything. <laughs> You're not? Just keep spending rep, baby. We're going to keep rolling okay, in Okay, you convinced me. I'll spend rep we again. We fill up our rep track with like everything we do. <laughs> You're right. Especially if we're right. Okay, okay. I will do it. Um... I don't autom- I don't get another two automatically, right? That's just every downtime I automatically get one. Just once per downtime, yep. All right. Um, so that was my first action. My second action, I'm actually going to attempt to attune. I'm going to try and reach out and I'm going to talk to Kichi. I'm going to talk to Wei Young a little bit. I'm going to learn things about what happened in the spirit world and I'm going to try and reach out to other spirits saying this is what's going on father glowworm is doing this there's a danger to the balance i need you to start i need basically i want to up the spirit activity in bossing say to start scaring people making it easier for us to do this coup interesting all right another five I'm not going to push myself this time. Okay. That brings us to six out of 12. You're halfway done with the coup, baby. Planning the coup. Planning the coup, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and I think since you are upping your spirit activity on this side, and since uh, Brother Hotaru, you refused his demand to stop doing all of your spirit stuff, I think he is kind of increasing his as well. So you're starting to hear like reports in the Bossing Say Times about like, back alleyways where there are these strange like greenish spirits in battle with all these other multicolored spirits like somebody turns a corner and it's like oh that person has only one eye and they're in a fight with a dragonfly bunny that's weird i'm gonna (laughs) run away that's creeping me out it's fine i don't know why he gets worried can can i say that like as part of that I'm also, like, disseminating amongst the people of the town that, like, yeah, the masked spirits were scary, but that's just because you didn't understand what they were trying to do for you. Now you're starting to see they're the good guys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Spread that propaganda, baby. Yeah. Yeah, so you're kind of, like, on the rooftops looking down at all of the chaos going on beneath you, just kind of like, yes, yes. (laughs) And you hear from next to your feet, there's, like, some plants growing from between the cracks. You hear a little... (laughs) Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the horror stories that Wei Young told me. What evil I, have you wrought upon this land? <laughs> I, I I pluck one of the flowers and I just sniff it. <laughs> Things are going well. <laughs> so now that we're done with downtime, uh, I think we've still got enough time left in this episode to do some XP questions real quick. Woo-hoo. Let's do it. All right, let's start with the crew. Did you execute a successful battle extortion sabotage or smash and grab? Smash and grab, I would say yes. We smashed the spirit world open and grabbed a few people. We got three people out. You did? Well, no, we got two people out and one person in. Net positive. Yeah, net positive. <laughs> mm-hmm. So do you feel like that's one or two? I like saying two, but I'm pretty sure that's just one. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't feel like a two. <laughs> Not this time. All right. Next, did you contend with challenges above your current station? If that's not a two, I don't know what is. I agree. <laughs> I feel like we say that every time. <laughs> we mess with some big stuff, man. We're messing where we shouldn't be messing. <laughs> Next, did you bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one? Your reputation being that you are daring. I yes. would argue we're bolstering that, yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and if we include the downtime stuff too. That's true because you have done a lot of groundwork to, I mean, you've got the spirit mask showing yourself around doing that. You've got all of the new spirit activity that Tonin's introducing into the city. I think that probably sounds like two. All right. And finally, did you express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of the crew? I think so. Yeah. I don't know how to verbalize that, but I think we did. <laughs> I don't feel like it's a two ticker, but... I think increasingly part of the essential nature of the crew is this realization of like, hey, 
we kind of actually do have to stick together <laughs> and support each other. And you got Wei Young back from the spirit world. You did lose Day, but like your bonds as not just co-workers, but <laughs> I mean, Wei Young straight up said, hey, I've got friends with me. Uh, I think that's probably enough justification for us there. Agreed. Sweet. So we're just two away from leveling up the crew. Now let's go to Siwei Lang. All right. Did you address a challenge with violence or coercion? No. I think this is actually the first time that you just kind of like sat on the sidelines while they did all the no. weird spirit stuff. He was he was banging the bowl. He was violent towards the bowl. Well, I also was not. Downtime activities, I'm assuming you were probably violent or something during your jobs for Mercy. That's a good point. That's true, yes. So one. Makes sense to me. It's a reach, but it's there. Hey, <laughs> I finally have a level and insight. Hey, nice. look at you, man. Yeah. <laughs> finally get to roll one die for resistance rolls against <laughs> Brother Hotaru. And we will put it in study for my animal breeding. Nice. nice. There we go. Next, did you express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? You got a lot of money this time around. I did. I see. This was a weird one because during the actual job, I was more kitschy than Seaway. <laughs> Seaway did kind of. He just kind of banged the spirit pole, uh, kept it ringing. So Seaway wise, during the job, I didn't. During downtime, I mean, yeah, I worked to pay off the debt, which is part of what's driving me. And you made a really big sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say one for that. All right. And did you struggle with issues from your vice or traumas during this session? Not issues. I did have to go get use one of my downtime activities to go reduce a... Uh, oh, wait, that's a harm, not a vice or trauma. Well, hold on a second. The whole reason you got up in that dude's face is because you're unstable, and you received that harm because you were being unstable. <laughs> so you had to heal the harm that was caused by your instability. It's true. And uh, my vice, actually, while I have always said it's a secret, it does relate to my debt. So anytime I'm having to work to pay that off is sort of struggles from my vice. <laughs> yeah, and you did end up with a bruised ego from it. Yeah, so I'd say one for that as well. All right, next up is Tonin Yoru. Did you address a challenge with deception or influence? Uh, yeah, I straight up tried to trick my deity, basically, to get out of a, a deal. Yeah. Fair. And then influence, I would say, strong influence vibes during the downtime stuff. Yeah, talking to the spirits being all like, hey, help us in this war on spirit crime. <laughs> yeah, I think we could get you a couple for that. I will take a couple if you're willing. Next, did you express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? Yes. There was a lot of singing bowl action again during this one. And I think also the fact that you are now needing to come to terms with the severance of your connection with Ko, even though that is what you've spent like your entire life leading up to. Yeah, that's that feels like its own trauma. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You haven't necessarily explored that too deeply at this point, but I think if we keep that in mind for future downtimes, as you start to take time to individualize yourself away from all that co-related stuff, I think we can definitely keep that in mind. Okay, so I'll take one now? Indeed. Okay, then I'm going to fill out the resolve track and put one more dot in a tune, giving me three in a tune. Ooh. Dang, son. And then finally, did you struggle with issues from your vice or traumas? Yes. I am haunted. That you are. I am. <laughs> and that is definitely a trauma. <laughs> I may need to change my vice. That is a good point. That's a very good point. I didn't I didn't do it this time, so next time I will have a different vice ready, I think. I got this rage essence you could try. <laughs> All right, yeah. I think we'll give you one for vice and traumas, and uh, we'll chat off, Mike, about what your new vice is going to be. Yeah. Okay, and then we get to Thomas. So since we had two different characters, like Day was the one involved in the actual heist primarily, and then Wei Young was the one involved in downtime. Uh, how do you want to handle this? You want to do both of them? Uh, we'll do both of them, but it should be quick because there's only half for each. Okay, <laughs> we'll start with Wei Young. Did you address a challenge with calculation or conspiracy? Uh, no, there was no trickery on my end. Well, there was no conspiracy per se, but I think calculation, you spent like an entire week slamming Red Bulls in the singing bowl room. Fair play. So Yeah, <laughs> I was calculating that. You got me there. I'll, I'll take the point. Okay, we'll give you one for that. Next, did you express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? Uh, I would argue yes. I desperately wanted to get back to continue doing what I wanted. So <laughs> I, I think one, yes. Yeah, and also the desperation to get your butler back from the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And then finally, did you struggle with issues from your vice or traumas? I'm not sure I'd say struggled, but 
I did opt to not take a devil's bargain because I didn't want people to know I was back. Mm, you are paranoid. So maybe? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'll roll for it. Yeah, roll for it. You not taking a devil's bargain feels like a thing. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like that's a big step for Thomas. Okay. <laughs> I'll say if the friends are supporting it, then we'll go ahead and give it to you. All right, I'll take one dot. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, day esh ex mokina. Did you address a challenge with knowledge or arcane power? 100% yes. Very yes. Very, very yes. I think that deserves a two. <laughs> I think it does as well. Because uh, he, he not only got into the spirit world, he also managed to modify a connection between two people. Yeah. Um, Sounds like two ticks to me. Next, did you express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? I desperately wanted to get my boy back. And you and, did it. Uh, I did it. So yes. Mm -hmm. And now I get a new playbook thing. Ooh. I've not decided which one though. <laughs> okay. We'll make sure to touch base with that as well at the start of our next episode. Okay. And finally, did you struggle with issues from your vice or traumas? No, not at all. Not to have traumas. My vice didn't come up. Oh yeah. It never came up. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see when that comes up with you stuck in the spirit world. But <gasps> Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, we keep talking about Day's Vice being a weird one. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to it eventually. <laughs> one day you guys will see it. I promise. Uh, at the very least, I'll tell you in the Discord if it doesn't come out during the sessions. Indeed. Well, that looks like it does it for our payoff, downtime, XP, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now that we have lots of these pieces in place, I think next time we're probably going to need to do some planning, but <laughs> we're going to deal with that next episode. Woo! And so for now, thanks everybody for listening to ImpTab Avatar. We'll be back next time with more adventures in the world of Blades in the Dao Fei. If you want more, go ahead and subscribe. Maybe even give us a review. We would be as happy as a young lad with a new llama bug friend to take home to his creepy <laughs> hideout if you go ahead and give us a review on the podcatcher of your choice. We're also all over social media at Improv Tabletop, so you'd like to connect with us there. You know, maybe you want to talk to me about what that my just my feelings about how complicated this has all gotten and how <laughs> we're going to make this work. Don't be afraid to reach out. Now it's time to shout out our next batch of sticker club patrons. Yeah. Was that too many woos? It felt like too many woos. It was the perfect amount of woos. Thank you. Never woo less than that again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't count how many that was. I'm going to have to do even more just to cover myself. First person we're shouting out is Tetra Slash. <laughs> All right, that was a few too many. I'm following Evan's direction, <laughs> okay? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Tetra Slash uh, probably was the one who helped you modify uh, your mouth mask into a spirit mask. Oh, nice. Thanks. It's creepy, thanks to you. <laughs> yeah. Next person we're shouting out is Michael Sear. Mikey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who, when Brother Hotaru gets back to Lung Kao, is immediately going to shove the llama bug into Mikey's hands and say, take care of this for me. It's just, <laughs> it, I don't actually want this thing. It's just a political move. No. <laughs> I, I sentenced that poor creature. Mikey's going to take care of it. Don't He'll worry. take good care of it. He's literally going to take care of it. He's not going to, like, mob take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, boss. I'll take care of it. Who's a cute little guy? <laughs> and the last person we're shouting out is Elina Georgieva. The legend. Who is being very dutiful in making sure that Jenna has her ice cream and like stroking her <laughs> hair as she weeps into Ellie's lap, wondering if she can ever go back to Seaway. Oh. Yeah, it's a, a rough time for Jenna now that people know that she's been feeding your information to another guy on the side. I forgive her. <laughs> Wei Young still does not know about that. Oh boy. That's for the best. You probably shouldn't tell him, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when Jenna shows back up on the scene. But for now, that's all of our Sticker Club patrons for this week. And if you, dear listener, want to join their ranks, consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash improv tabletop, where you can also get bonus content, biannual sticker packs, Discord access, and more, such as the obligatory talkback, where we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> just, it's, hard, it's hard to try and single one thing out from this just crazy mess but uh you know we're gonna have some fun icebreakers to talk about uh we spent like 15 minutes talking about potato chips in a recent one <laughs> so get in on that it's a fun time now let's do a round of plugs as always we've got our fake campaigns they're tons of fun and i really miss them and i'm excited to eventually get back to them someday <laughs> we've got imptab avatar 10,000 things which i also am feeling nostalgic for as well that was a grand old time, a grand experiment that eventually led us to this campaign. 
We've got our sister podcast, I Cast Fireball, which just launched a Patreon recently. Way to go! And that has been going super well. Super glad to see all of the familiar faces, people who are supporting the ImpTab Patreon and the I Cast Fireball Patreon. It's a big old happy family, and I love it. We've also got our affiliation with FanRollDice.com, where if you use coupon code Vroom Vroom Fifi, you can get 10% off your order, and some of that goes back to us. And, you know, for the past several months, I've been thinking, nobody's using this coupon code. Why are we still shouting this out? And then two people used that coupon code last month. Woo! Woo! Look at that! Yeah. So good for you, FanRoll. We're going to keep shouting you out for a little <laughs> longer, at least. Uh, the other thing I'm going to shout out real quick is a movie called Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliostro. It is Hayao Miyazaki's directorial debut before he started Studio Ghibli. Really? Yeah, it's lots of fun. I watched like a two hour long video essay about it by a guy on YouTube called Bread Sword. And it reminded me how much I love that movie. It's a special one. Go check it out. Bread Sword's also pretty good. He, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going to geek out about too much, but uh, he has this really cool video essay about how Lion King One and a Half is basically the Disney adaptation of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really cool stuff. Go check that out. Um, that's going to do it. Uh, thanks for joining us here in the world of ImpTab Avatar Blades in the Dao Fei. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host in GM, and I've been joined by... Thomas Ryan as Hu Wei Young. Christian Randall as Tonin Yoru. And Evan Peterson as Si Wei Lang. Much love and stuff, everybody. We'll catch you next time on ImpTab Avatar. Not many people meet Ko and come out up one face. We stole a face from Ko. <laughs> <laughs>